If I teach this debate class to teenagers, and I'm a huge proponent of being able to see who's in my class, okay? The entire reason we moved classes to Zoom and other online chat platforms and things like that um, is because it's the next best thing to having class in person, right? The entire reason we don't have classes just over the phone is because being able to see the students, being able to see your classmates and interacting with them is a much better experience than just hearing class, right? And so that's why we moved over to Zoom. But I noticed something as I've been teaching my class this semester, and that is this. Most of the time, I can't see my students' faces. And so I thought to myself like, oh, well, what's happening is that my students just don't want me to see their face, and so they're turning their camera off. And sometimes that's true, but generally speaking, what's happening is that their laptops are crapping out on them. So they're on the Zoom call, and their laptop can't handle the Zoom meeting, <laughs> and their laptop just cuts their video. And then sometimes their laptop, like, starts to die and I just imagine this like like right and it just cuts them from the meeting entirely it just kicks them out right and so then they have to log back in and they're like sorry my laptop died on me and I had to log back in right and I have to readmit them to the class and things like that now this isn't their fault necessarily right two things happened when the pandemic hit when it comes to online education number one laptops good laptops went fast like they just freaking vanished right they're just like gone Okay, so that's the first thing that happened. The next thing that happened was every laptop company on the planet started marketing their computers as good for work from home or good for online education. And the fact is, most laptops aren't. And so I got thinking to myself, what if somebody created a definitive guide for shopping for online education laptops or good work from home laptops? Not necessarily the best gaming laptop or the techiest, nerdiest laptop, right? Like just like a laptop that's good, that's gonna get you good experience for Zoom and online education, gonna do the stuff you need. Like how do you just find that laptop, right? And so I was thinking like, why doesn't somebody create that for parents? So next time they're in buying a laptop because their Chromebook's crapping out on them, you know, they know what to buy. And so I decided to create that. And that's what this is. Um, I actually created a PDF as well. Uh, just a, a little infographic that highlights what we're talking about in this video. And I'll link that down below as well as put it up right here now. And uh, you can you can look that up on your phone or print it out or whatever and take it into the store so you don't have to remember what I talked about today, right? Because I love not having to remember things. So, all right, let's dive into it. What do you need to know to buy a good laptop for online education? The first rule, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, was don't buy a Chromebook. Just get it out of your head that you're going to buy a Chromebook. It's not good. It's not a great experience. They're not great computers, generally speaking, right? Now, Google will market these as good work-from-home laptops or good back-to-school laptops or things like that. And, like, they're okay if you're majoring in, like, philosophy or writing or something like that and uh, you're at college and you don't need to use any sort of specific programs or anything like, like they're okay for those things, right? They're great for taking notes, they're great for surfing the web, looking at YouTube videos, going on Facebook. They're great for a lot of things, but they're just not great back to school laptops if you're gonna do online education, right? They have really low specs. And what I mean by a, a low spec machine is that Google essentially took a bunch of really cheap parts, threw them into a laptop, made it look nice, and that way they could sell it to a bunch of elementary schools and junior highs for super cheap, and it worked. A lot of elementary schools and junior highs bought them, and so that's where Chromebooks kind of got their start was in the schools, right, because you just needed to be able to access things online, um, and that was back before, you know, elementary schools and junior highs were using video chats, right, and so Chromebooks don't need those things uh, for most of the things that the Chromebooks do, right? When you started introducing video um, education, right, and, and things like that, Chromebooks just don't cut it. They're just, they're super cheap machines, right? There's a reason you only paid $150 for your Chromebook. It's not a great book. It's not, it's not a great laptop, right? It's just not going to cut it, right? So just get it out of your head that you're going to get a Chromebook. You shouldn't get a Chromebook. You should never get a Chromebook. They're just not great machines, okay? Okay, now that we've gotten the Chromebook thing out of the way and you know that that's not what you're supposed to get, let's talk about the next thing that you need to remember, okay? And really, when it comes to what to look for in a laptop, there are only two things you need to remember, and we'll talk about both of them. The first one's the processor. The second one is the RAM. So let's talk about the processor. And I know what you're thinking. You said you're not going to get techie, like you're not going to get super nerdy on this, and I won't, okay? The processor is just the word. 
that is the part itself, okay? And uh, basically, you can think of the processor as the brains of the computer, right? The processor, or CPU as it's sometimes called, is what makes your computer smart, okay? It essentially tells you what kind of programs you can run. And the better your processor, the better the programs you can run, or the more complex programs you can run, okay? Think of it this way. It is not very hard for a computer to check email, right? You just got to look up some data and things like that. It is very hard for a computer to send video while receiving video and send audio while receiving audio and run this you know, program in the background and you know put people into breakout rooms and figure out the internet connect. Like That is a lot more complex, right? And so you need at least a pretty good processor, a pretty good brains in your computer if you're going to do something like Zoom. Now, I'm going to make this pretty easy to remember. You just have to remember three numbers for your processor. Those numbers are three, five, and seven. First three prime numbers, not too bad, okay? Essentially, the way this works is there are two major processing companies, right? One is Intel, the other is AMD. Okay? So when you're shopping for a laptop, just remember you look for either an AMD processor or an Intel processor, and you want to remember the, the numbers 3, 5, or 7, right? On the Intel side of things, these are going to look like Intel i3, i5, and i7 processors. On the AMD side of things, it's going to look like Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 processors. But you both use 3, 5, and 7, and that's going to be an indication that the processor you're getting is a decent processor, okay? It can handle Zoom calls. It can handle tasks in the background. It can handle, you know, surfing the web and everything else that you need to do. And those are generally going to be really safe bets as far as what to put inside a computer, okay? Now, the only other thing that you need to worry about when it comes to looking for a laptop is the RAM. I said there were two things, the processor and the RAM. Now, the RAM is really important. Think of RAM if... If the processor, the CPU, is the brains of your machine, of your laptop, the RAM is like the muscle, okay? So it's like the processor is what you can do, the RAM tells you how much of it you can do, okay? And you need both in order to have a good experience, right? If you have a really awesome processor but you don't have enough RAM, then you're not going to be able to do much. If you have a bunch of RAM but you don't have a great processor, you're still not going to be able to do much. So you need enough of both. You need both a good processor and good RAM. Now, RAM is measured in gigabytes. And this is even easier to remember than the processor one. The processor one, you have to remember 3, 5, and 7. With the RAM, you just have to remember 8. As long as you have at least 8 gigabytes, you're going to be just fine. Now, how do you know what's in your machine, right? I don't even know how to check if the processor is good or how the RAM is good. You know, I don't know how to check these things, right? What do you do if you don't know how to check what's inside your computer? Well, most of the time when you're buying a computer from a big box store like Walmart, they will have a little placard of what is inside the computer right next to the computer, right? So you go up and you're like, oh, let's see what's in this, this laptop here, right? Right next to it is a card that tells you what's inside the computer, right? And it will have listed the processor, the RAM, the storage, a whole bunch of things right there. And you just need to look, is it a good processor? Is it enough RAM, right? That's all you need to look for, okay? If that still is a little bit confusing to you, all you need to do is you walk in and you say, hey, Best Buy guy, I'm looking for a laptop with eight gigabytes of RAM and at least an i3 processor. And they'll know exactly what you're talking about. And they'll be able to give you a laptop that is going to suit your needs, okay? So again, you just say, Best Buy guy, I just need something with 8 gigs of RAM and at least an i3 processor. They'll be able to point you in the right direction, okay? Okay, now that's pretty much it. That's all you need to remember. The processor, the RAM, and don't buy a Chromebook, okay? As long as you have those things, you're going to have a pretty good experience both working from home or having online education work just fine for you, okay? Now, are there other things that you can think about that would make a computer good? Of course, there are other things that you could think about. You could think about them until you're blue in the face, right? You could go into the intricate details as to what makes a good processor and what makes enough RAM and, you know, whether or not that RAM is the best RAM and, and you, know, you know, but that stuff doesn't really matter. You're going to have a great experience no matter what kind of computer you get, as long as it has at least eight gigs and at least an i3 processor or a Ryzen 3 processor, you're gonna be just fine, okay? Another thing to remember is that laptops in this range cost between $500 and $700. Now, you might be able to find one that's like $400, 
right? And that would be pretty cool. But generally speaking, if you're buying it new, it's gonna be five to $750 for a laptop of this grade. And I know you're thinking like, yeah, but Chromebooks are only 150 bucks or 250 bucks. And it's like, well, yeah, but your Chromebook never worked, right? Like you spent $250 on something that doesn't work. I'd rather spend $500 on something that does work, right? So that's a pretty good thing to remember is that when you're buying a laptop, good ones will last for a long time. The bad ones never worked in the first place. That's it for your buying guide. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below and I'd love to answer them. But until then, we'll see you later.